All right, you scum, suit up! All right, let's talk about the infantry. But first, if you have not already watched the units, roles, and loadouts primer and the general advice video, please go do so now. The links will be in the description. Both of those will answer a lot of the questions that are going to come up, so please go watch them first. So let's talk about the infantry. If it were actually up to me to dictate loadouts, about 75% of the auxiliary on the field would always be infantry, would be armed with an infantry loadout. And I consider infantry to be more a loadout philosophy and less of a role, because that, the loadouts that I'm going to describe in this video would be perfectly suited for any of the various roles, with the exception of zombie. Whether you want to be recon, rear guard, hunter, feral squad, part of the command column, mission squad, an infantry loadout will work in any of those units. Now I am going to divide the, the loadouts into a light loadout and a medium loadout, and light are better for some and medium are better for others, but they both are going to fall under the category of infantry loadouts, and it's the type of loadouts that I would like to see the most of, because they work. These are the loadouts that I ran at all of the various N, uh, HVZs where I was playing as a human. Any time that I played an NPC, I tended to play a heavy loadout because it was a lot of fun. But it wasn't as functional. Whereas if I'm playing a human and I actually want to survive, I'm going to go with one of these two loadouts, an, an infantry loadout, because they work. They will definitely give you an edge and help you make it to the end, to the final mission, if that's what you're really interested in. So for those of you that are interested in a really functional infantry loadout, let's take a look at some of the basic equipment that I think all infantry should have. Now both of these were covered in the general advice, but I'm going to go over them again real quick. This is definitely a loadout where you're going to want a knee pad, and obviously you're going to want a dump pouch, so you're going to want a battle belt to hang it off of. Now you can hang it off of a regular belt, you can hang it off of web gear, you can hang it off of whatever you want, but you should definitely have the dump pouch. The battle belt will then allow you to attach holsters and other equipment that you want might want. And mine is set up to have different kinds of holsters. I've got two different buckles because I've got two different holsters that had different quick release buckles. Of course, there couldn't be standards. Uh, and I will have different holsters depending on whether I'm going with a light infantry or a medium infantry loadout. So a good battle belt is just a, a good thing to have because it's useful. You can, you can put things on it. All right, let's take a look at some different kinds of harnesses. For my infantry loadout, I favor a lighter vest. This is not actually a full plate carrier. It is just a, a vest with, that's got molly on it. You probably could put plates in it, but it's, it's not really designed for that. It's meant for holding gear, which is the beauty of molly. And I have several magazine pouches on it. These are the quick, you know, the, the tension kind. And I, I carry four. Uh, how many magazines you choose to carry is another one of those kind of really up to you thing. I recommend four on the vest and one in the blaster. Um, HVZs tend to be run in one hour missions, and if you're using more than five magazines in one hour mission, you were really in the thick of it. Um, and you probably ought to have someone in your squad that is your reload, your ammo mule. But um, even in heavy engagement, you should have opportunity to top off magazines or pull from a dump pouch or what have you. So that's what I recommend. Much more than that, and you start getting kind of overloaded and bulky, and it makes movement a little bit more difficult. Um, obviously, larger people could carry a lot more. Smaller people might want to carry less. Um, leg, pou leg drop pouches for magazines are an option. Um, magazine backpacks are an option. However many magazines you choose to carry is, is really up to you, but don't overdo it with the infantry loadout. Heavy loadouts are where you're going to want to be just festooned with magazines because you're going to be going through a lot more ammo. The blasters that I'm going to recommend for the infantry loadout are much more conservative on ammo use, so you don't need to carry as many. So a simple vest with a couple, with at least four magazine pouches is what I recommend. I also recommend that you have some form of water carrying. So obviously you've got your dump pouch or your cargo pants. You could have something hooked onto your belt, or in this case the vest has a camelback strapped to it, a molly camelback. There are some really nice ones. This one's a little bit less low profile. It's actually also a backpack. Um, so yeah, your, your water can also be put onto here. Now the problem with this vest is that it's black. Black tactical gear, some events don't allow that. Some sites are like, we don't want any black tactical gear for, for whatever reason. Um, and it's usually not the club, it's generally the administration. Be aware of that. And so I do have other options. 
The crew actually got into HVZ before we had fully incorporated as a private security company and thus got all of the black tactical gear. And before then we just had old surplus army gear. So this is old Alice gear from before Molly came around. And it can be gotten at army surplus stores, you can get it on eBay, you can probably find it at a garage sale if you look. And a lot of the pouches that existed for this system are really, really good for nerf. So these pouches, which are as a mag pouch and then two grenade pouches, holds magazines just as well as a double AK pouch do. But then it also has pouches for your socks, uh, foam brain, they will hold demolisher rockets perfectly, my foam grenade. So it's actually really, really nice pouches. And the Alice gear tends to be a little bit less scary than the black Molly stuff. I also then do have a canteen pouch, though I don't own a canteen. Sock down! And then I have a pair of much larger pouches back here which are good for holding water, if you know, extra water, extra ammunition. They'll actually hold drum magazines quite nicely. Um, so yeah, you can get yourself some Alice gear. It's really quite nice. Also very customizable, it's very modular. If you want to go even more minimalist, because some groups even don't want to see this kind of stuff, we can go even further down. Now, all right, now we've got the extreme minimalized. This is just a battle belt with magazine holders on it. And some people, this is all they're going to run. Dump pouch could either be attached to it, I've still got it on my separate one just because it's easier that way. And then I've got a camelback to deal with that, to, deal, to have my water. Um, and I've got pockets if I needed socks, so you could have a few extra pouches for socks. But this is kind of the, the bare minimum, and a lot of people do run just this because it's lighter, it's not as cumbersome, it's lower profile, it, you know, all of that. So as long as it does what it needs to do, which is hold however many magazines you feel like holding, you could have them double stacked, single stacked, triple stacked, whatever you want. Um, as long as they will hold your magazines, as long as you got your dump pouch, as long as you got your water, you're good to go. All right. Now let's talk about blasters. I'm gonna start with my recommendations for the medium infantry because that is the one I'd like to see the most of. For the medium infantry, your primary blaster is going to be what we refer to as a battle rifle. Now this is the Strifle Mark II with underslung magnus and this is what we're going to have the, the standard issue as it were, but it doesn't need to be this. As I stated in the primer, anything that qualifies as a semi-automatic magazine fed blaster that fires darts or rival rounds and has some way of firing something heavier qualifies as a battle rifle and therefore qualifies perfectly good to consider yourself medium infantry. So whatever you have, whatever your preference is, go for it. Whatever works for you, whatever your, your personal blaster is, that's perfectly fine. Excellent. For a sidearm, I recommend something hammer primed a springer, a hammer primed springer of some kind. Again, details are entirely up to you. And I actually recommend that you have it on a, a holster that's drawable by your off hand. And the reason being, it allows you to do things like this. Because checking a corner on your off side with your primary blaster is very easy. But checking a corner opposite of you, opposite of your, or on your primary side is a lot more cumbersome. Now I have my single, I go with a single point sling which actually allows me to quite easily switch, but that is still decidedly more cumbersome than just being able to do this and check both corners, both corners. It also allows me, since this is semi-automatic, to fire at two different targets at once, should things get really hairy and I need to be able to put down extra firepower. So that's my rationale between the, the hammer primed sidearm of some kind. The other reason I recommend a springer as opposed to say, another strife or another flywheel pyre, f powered blaster like any of the various half dart ones is for stealth. Flywheels are very very noisy and alert your opponents to where you are whereas a springer is very qu much more quiet and it you're less worried about the, drawing the attention of the zombies right near you they're gonna know when you start shooting but the zombie one building over might not hear your springer but would definitely hear your flywheels so for stealth purposes, it's good to have a quieter blaster. Now for your battle rifle, if your primary rifle is semi-automatic mag fed, but doesn't have the underslung blaster and it's like you're, you've put a lot of time in, and effort and modded it and have gone in and don't want to have to additionally mod it to have a, an, a, another blaster, that's fine. There are other options. So if you're going with a, a, a primary rifle that doesn't have the underslung or some other option, Things that you can do instead, 
socks. Uh, everyone, every low, every roll and loadout should definitely be carrying socks because in general they always qualify to kill super zombies. Some zombies can only be taken out by socks. So definitely have socks for that very purpose. The other option is to have another blaster, either you know something like a big shock or a hot shock that can fire your mega, um, a mega hammer shot. That's one of the things that I would carry. But you need to have that functionality, that ability to take out super zombies should you run into one. Because there's a good chance they're going to start throwing extra super zombies to deal with the auxiliary. And so you, you need to have that, that functionality there. Um, it does put you a little bit closer into the light infantry, which I'm going to talk about now. For light infantry, I'm going to recommend what I'm going to simply refer to as the battle carbine, which is any magazine fed or high capacity pump action blaster that fires standard ammunition, rival or darts. So things like the Alpha Trooper, the Rampage, uh, pump action retaliators, uh, Artemis, Hades, Magnum Super Drum, um, any of those blasters that have that high capacity but again pump action preferably. Top slide is just a little bit more awkward. Pump action in my opinion tends to be a little bit smoother. But again, your preference. But again, it's, it, it provides a fair amount of power. A lot of those have slam fire, which allows you to put out a lot more firepower than normal. Um, not quite as much as, say, a, a, a semi-automatic flywheel blaster, but still a reasonable amount of power. And the pump action forces you to aim more. And that's kind of the, the, the benefit of it, is you're going to actually make your shots count. Whereas semi-automatic, you might have a little bit more tendency to pop off rounds and waste ammunition. Um, obviously more of an issue with your heavy and your full auto stuff, but that's why that's a whole separate um, role. This is something where you're making your shots count and making every dart count because you're in a position where you're going to be engaged a lot and you don't want to waste ammunition. So that's where the carbine falls into. For sidearms, at this point, I'm going to recommend a, um, a semi-automatic flywheel as your secondary, as your sidearm, either a Strife or any of the various variants. At this point, something like one of those would be perfectly acceptable. And the reason being is to give you that additional firepower. So if you're suddenly in a situation where you need to be able to put down a lot more fire, covering fire, you know, suppressing fire, something like that, you pull out your semi-automatic flywheel, or in this case, this is actually an auto Strife, and you can put down a lot more firepower very, very quickly. You're also, again, going to need some form of super zombie killer. So, again, your socks or, you know, in my case, the, the magnum or the, the, the mega hammer shot or your big shock or your big strike. Something that will allow you to take out those supers should you encounter them. Now, obviously, since this is the, the springer instead of the flywheel and is therefore the quieter option, this would be a good infantry choice for, say, recon or possibly even for hunter because you've got that... that, that primary that's a lot quieter but still has the additional firepower. So that's my recommendations for the light infantry loadout. Going back to our battle rifle, the, the reason I recommend semi-automatic over fully automatic for the infantry is because, as I said before, ammo conservation. You are going to be on the front line, you are going to be among the most engaged units on the battlefield and you, you need to make your ammo last because even if you carry a ridiculous amount of ammo, if you're going full auto and putting 10 rounds into every single zombie, you're going to run out of ammo. Whereas the semi-automatic and the pump action are much more of a one-shot, one-tag kind of situation. And that's, ammo is, is a commodity. It, you're, you don't have an infinite amount. Um, especially once you get to like the last stands or the big hold location missions. Uh, you, you really want to make your, your ammunition go as far as it possibly can. So that's why I recommend semi-automatic. Now, something like select fire, sure, you have the best of both worlds, but you add that added complexity that leads to the potential of failures. But as long as you have the semi-automatic capability, then it qualifies. So any of the blasters that are semi-automatic are going to fit into that role. So to sum up, the infantry is the backbone of the auxiliary. You will be called upon to fill every possible role that may be used, and you will definitely be called upon to hold the line against sustained zombie attacks. As long as your loadout is able to keep up a reliable, accurate rate of fire, 
then your loadout will work. And as long as you are able to somehow take out super zombies when necessary, then your loadout will work and you will qualify as infantry. So, I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield. Bangarang! <laughs>